Hello, uh, here's Mitsaka with another time lapse video. Um, in the background, running is um, yeah, this little train I recently made, and you can just uh, keep watching that. But while that is playing, I uh, want to talk about three questions because uh, lately somebody asked in the uh, comments how I learned Blender. Um, so these are the uh, three questions I want to combine and to talk about. First of all, what uh, software should I use? Second, how should I learn Blender? And third, how did you learn Blender? Um, so for the first question, um, there are a lot of uh, 3D softwares out there. There's Cinema 4D, there's Maya, 3ds Max, Blender, there's also SketchUp and ZBrush. Um, which both are more specialized, so uh, I will not uh, talk about those, um, but more about the well, general uh, 3D softwares now. Um, to start off, they are not that different. Um, the basic functionality is the same, and if you want to do art uh, that I create, probably all of them will work, and that's just it. Um, it's just very minor differences uh, that set them apart. So I will mainly uh, talk about Blender because um, I know the advantages and disadvantages of Blender. I didn't use the other softwares that much. Um, so first of all, it's free. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's that's very important. You can even create commercial products with it uh, without paying anything. It's just yeah, free open source. Yeah, completely free to use, which is a great advantage for me because I uh, want to earn money with it but um, I don't have a lot of money so paying uh, several hundred dollars for a 3D software is not an option for me um, second it has such a great community um, there are so many tutorials out there there are trainers if you um, talk to them if you write an email to them they will uh, almost definitely answer and have a solution for your problem. Um, I really want to encourage you to, to write to people because that will speed up your learning process by a lot. Just talk to them. So a great community is definitely an advantage of Blender. Also, you have uh, quite fast uh, bug reports. There's a bug tracker for Blender where you can um, report bugs and they generally uh, get fixed maybe even on the same day, um, otherwise a bit uh, later probably. Um, so that's also a big advantage, as, uh, especially if you're in the um, yeah, commercial industry and like your company is doing something but when there's a bug and uh, people can't work. So fast uh, solving of bugs is really an advantage. Um, as well, um, fast workflow, another great advantage. I know um, the other softwares also have a um, good workflow. Um, and Blender sometimes has uh, bugs and problems which appear, but generally it is like a creative suit. Uh, like, think about it. You can uh, do 3D modeling in it, but also texturing, scripting, video editing, compositing, and all those things in one program. And that is uh, what makes Blender so incredibly fast to work with. Um, and the um, other things that speed up your... Um, your process in Blender really a lot is that you have very very many shortcuts um, that's just fast um, it is highly customizable um, there's an add-on for like every problem that can appear um, yeah so you're already fast with it um, the many shortcuts are a bit bad um, for beginning um, that is like the a problem there are way too many shortcuts if you're starting, but then you learn them step after step and uh, you get used to them. And also the UI can be a bit confusing on Blender, uh, to be honest. But um, yeah, ju you just have to fight through that and then it's, <laughs> it's the greatest uh, advantage you will have. Um, so generally i would say blender is good for people who want to start off with 3d because it's it's like with uh, programming languages if you learn one program it's not that hard to switch at least that's what most people uh, uh say so 
why not? Why not start with a free software that is, um, yeah, as good as the other ones and has just some um, disadvantages here and there. So, uh, second question. How should I learn Blender? Uh, to be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> you just need to um, do what you want to do, I think. Um, if you if you want to keep doing Blender, you just need to keep your motivation up. And um, the easiest way to do that is um, to learn a lot of new things, to um, do the things and learn the things you want to do, to have goals. Like, I want to model a car, so yeah, work, work towards that. Learn the things you need to learn for it, and uh, eventually you will get there. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have many tips uh, how, how you should learn Blender, but uh, I want to tell you how I learned Blender. So back in 2012, I was in uh, eighth grade, and I created an intro for our class trip video. It was this 20th uh, century Fox type of um, um, yeah intro. So we found a Blender template for that. We uh, modified it, set up a new text, and then rendered it and used it. So it was really fun. So, uh, but after that, my my contact with Blender, um, I guess, broke. Well, uh, we 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 kept um, like af after a couple of weeks, we started to use Blender again, just for fooling around, and we created like cubes with cool physics stuff because physics, yay! Um, and then we found out that you could texture them. And what textures? That is amazing. Uh, <laughs> so um, that was uh, really fun, um, and I did that with a friend who after that. Quit Blender. He's he's more into programming, so um, that's that's really cool as well. Um, but I kept doing things, and I uh, watched a lot of tutorials by Andrew Price, aka uh, Blender Guru, which I really recommend. Um, they are great for beginners, but also for um, more advanced people. It's it is it is really weird how he can uh, combine that uh, range of. Um, yeah, uh, people that he addresses to. So, uh, yeah, I really recommend that. Um, by the way, all the uh, people I mentioned will be down in the uh, description. Just, yeah, have a look at them. Um, and after that, I created some, let's say, uh, semi photorealistic vendors in 2014. Um, semi photorealistic because they weren't really, <laughs> but they aimed at it. So, um, yeah, I did that, and that was uh, really fun. I learned a lot um, there. So, but then I didn't do uh, really uh, much more. But um, I played a lot of Minecraft. Uh, what has that to do with uh, Blender? Well, um, I learned a lot about art in that period of time. Um, if you create voxel art, which Minecraft essentially is, um, you learn a lot about how to... Uh, we create objects, what you need to take care about, how things should be structured, how you keep um, um, yeah, models clean and easy to read. And if you, I, I really got into that and um, I work with a lot of really talented people. And yeah, I really learned a lot about art during that period. Um, but then eventually um, in, 2000, in early 2015 I quit Minecraft and started doing polygon art um, which was more of an accident than really a choice because I wanted to do a cool uh, wooden sculpture of this uh, lion um, which then ended up being non not textured and not refined and somehow it ended up as my logo. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> which is really weird. But um, yeah, I started uh, doing polygon art, creating low poly models, which was a lot of fun. I kept doing it. I started with uh, game development um, and I really kept doing that until now. Um, I introduced some new ways of learning, like I um, used a lot of uh, way less um, 
popular tutorials, but uh, um, those are way more advanced and a lot more interesting. Um, I will probably set up a list uh, down below for you to uh, look at. Um, and I also started doing my own research. I went to the library, uh, sketched some trees, and then made them 3D. I, um, yeah, I read a lot of books, try to find art that just appeals to me and try to analyze it and then apply that um, to my own art. So um, that's, that's how I learned in a nutshell. So what can you learn from that? Um, first of all, uh, you can learn through copying. I I did a lot of tutorials, or I watched a lot of tutorials, just, just copied it. Uh, that was also the way I learned how to create things in Minecraft. I just copied cool buildings. And then I started to realize how the people um, created those. And that is really a process that uh, goes automatically. Uh, you, you think about the things you create while you're creating them. So just, just do a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, I, I would recommend to only copy the best. Um, don't, uh, don't just, yeah search for some low poly stuff and then start copying it. Search for the uh, best art out there and then start looking at it. And you will fail to copy it. Yeah, of course you will, because you're not uh, as talented as, this, uh, as that person, but you will start to understand um, how he created it. Um, and then start modifying it. That's, that's also an important step. Don't just copy, but then after you're done copying, modify it. Put in uh, your own ideas and uh, concepts. The second point, um, learn about the world around you. Um, yeah, always be interested into science, into, well, sports, into the things that interest you. And then use those uh, to make your art cooler. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's just it. I guess it's uh, similar to the next point, understand the things you create. But it's really a philosophy that I want to go through. Um, when I created a sh uh, chimpanzee um, a few weeks ago, I started researching about their feet, which is really, really interesting um, to learn about. And then you can just use that in your art and make your art more awesome because you know what you're talking about. Okay, um, last point learn other styles too. I started with photorealistic and then ended up creating polygon art. Like, who would have thought that? And I even accidentally uh, ended up here. Um, just learn about every art, every style that you, you create, learn drawing. Um, all those things will help you a lot when uh, creating 3D models. Whew, yeah, a lot of things uh, to talk about. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and yeah, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.